Well, in conventional biology, the only way the genes change is a process called random mutation. This is in all the textbooks. What does it mean? It says this. I can chemically cause a mutation to occur, but what I can't control is the outcome. The outcome is always random. So the bottom line is that's where Darwinian belief comes in, that evolution was random in the genes, that genes are only changing by accident. That's conventional belief. Except 1988, this paper comes out in Nature by a man called John Cairns, and it changes the entire foundation of biology that we've ever held for the following reason. He tells us about a new kind of mutation called an adaptive mutation. The point about this mutation, that the genes are not changing randomly, but the environment is controlling the mutation so that you're always adjusting your genes to fit what you see in the environment. And so that it's not random, it's environmentally directed mutations. Well, recently, this is a paper that just came out within the last year, the other one was 1988. This is a very interesting paper because what they showed was this. You can take a population of bacteria, put it into five test tubes and put the same but very stressful environment into each of the test tubes, causing the bacteria to change their genes to survive. Here's the point. In each of the five test tubes, the result was exactly the same. Well, then all of a sudden it says, where's the random nature of that process? And the answer is not random. Evolutionary changes are always adapting to the environment. These miniature adaptive radiations unfold in the same way every time governed by the available environmental niches. Here's the point. We adjust our genes to fit the environment that we think we live in. And I say we think we live in because perception may be right and perception may be wrong. And therefore, perception is belief. And if this is true, do you understand what this means? It's belief that changes your genes. It's your perception that changes your genes. It's not an accident. And so this chart out of science, which is about Cairns' work about genetic changing, uh, I, cha I, I marked this one with an asterisk because when this article came out, this box was called Genes of DNA Metabolism. There's now a new name for that. It's now, they're called genetic engineering genes. What this means is this. We have now found out that in every one of your cells, you have genes whose function it is to rewrite the other genes when necessary. So you are all equipped with an ability to adapt and change your genes as you respond to the environment. So all of a sudden it says this, the environment, watch where the arrow goes, the environmental signals activate genetic engineering genes. They can change your own genes and change your genotype, but this one, Organisms' perception of the environment separate from the environment. Why? Because perception and environment may be two different things. I might say, I live in a toxic, hostile environment. But that might be my belief. I might be in a very supportive environment. So it says, my perception may differ from the reality of the environment. But n nonetheless, what does perception do? Follow the blue arrow. Activates genetic engineering genes. Your own beliefs are selecting your genes. And if you don't have the right genes to handle the stress that you're in, your belief will rewrite your genes in an effort to do so. So all of a sudden it says, there's a lot of control over your life, but it's mediated by the perception of the environment. That's what's controlling the whole thing. So our third conclusion is, not only does the perception activate behavior, not only does the perception activate the genes, but when necessary, perception rewrites genes. So what's the conclusion? Are you genetically controlled? Are you at the behest of your uh, heredity? Are you a victim? Absolutely not. Why? Because by adjusting your perception, you can adjust your behavior. By adjusting your perception, you can select different genes in your function. By adjusting your perception, you can rewrite your genes. Now, I wouldn't want you to rewrite your genes because 95% of us got here with very appropriate genes to survive and have a great life. Here's the problem. Almost always, when you rewrite your genes, you do a negative process because your genes were already working. And so lots of illnesses and things like cancer, 95% of cancer has no hereditary linkage. 95% of cancer is actively produced by individual's perception, rewriting their normal genes and making cancer genes. 
And all of a sudden, it's, unfortunately, remember when I told you when you were a victim of her, your heredity, you could be irresponsible because the genes just came that way. If you understand what I'm talking about, then all of a sudden you say, oh my goodness, then how I see things, how I believe things are going on become important. The answer is, huh, well, if you think your behavior or the selection of your genes or the rewriting of your genes is important, then the answer is yes, because all of these are connected to belief, because perception in humans is related to belief. So you have the ability to change anything in your body. Unfortunately, if you got here healthy and you change it, that usually means you're making it less uh, uh, effective as a living organism. So the bottom line is this, the perception of the environment, your nervous system, sees the environment and interprets it. So here's the real environment, here are the cells. Interestingly enough, if I would take dystrophic patients and take muscle cells out of their body, in many cases when I took the cells out of the body and put it into a good environment, the cells grew beautifully and, and grew healthy and well. But when they were in the body, they didn't. Why? Because somewhere between the environment and the cell, the perception got involved with it. So our beliefs are altering our biology at every moment, at every time, okay? So the question is, what kind of beliefs and genes am I affecting? Here's this beautiful but very important, simple understanding. The genes in your cell are the equivalent of programs in a disk, in a computer, okay? And the bottom line about it is this, what kind of programs then are in your body? And the answer is simply this, there are two classes of programs. One class is for growth and reproduction, which is a form of growth, and the other is for protection. So that the bottom line is this, when you walk into the environment, you're either gonna select growth programs or you're gonna select protection programs. And I'm gonna explain why it's an either or. I'll give you a simple understanding. I put a, pe a cell in a petri dish. And in one petri dish, I put nutrients here in front of the cell. In a, another petri dish, I put toxins in front of the cell. And then I wait for a period of time. What's gonna happen? The answer is this. Cells always move toward signals, nutrients or whatever, positive signals because positive signals encourage growth. On the other hand, when a cell was confronted with a toxin, toxins threaten survival. So what does a cell do? It doesn't move to the toxin, what does it do? It moves away. And therefore, cells always move away from negative signals. Why is that important? If I'm a cell and there's toxins, there's food here, I'm gonna move this way. If I'm a cell and there's toxins, I'm gonna move this way. Can a cell move forwards and backwards at the same time? And the answer is no. Why is that relevant? And the answer is simply this. When confronted with an environmental signal, the cells have to make a decision to be in growth or to be in protection. Why is that relevant? Because when the cell is in protection, it stops growing. And the more protection we think we need, the more we shut off our growth mechanisms, and therefore we start stymieing our own health.